Her name is Hagia. for you guys. Um, so our first speaker for today will be Helvi Shindume. Um, I had the pleasure of getting to know this brilliant um, young lady, uh, getting to engage her and um, getting to experience the, some of her work and some of her we also need to, to, to give a clap of a um, round, of, round of hands because she canceled the flights to Ethiopia to talk to us today. So uh, let's be grateful and get to listen to what she has to say. So basically, um, the intent um, is that in Namibia, we have different aspects of, um, let's say, environment. So we have environment, wildlife, we have environment, uh, nature, we have environment, agriculture, and forestry, basically. So this is a young lady that had the opportunity opportunity to build her own foundation, an organization that uh, is uh, running internationally now, basically. Um, so she's a young person that came up with uh, women in agriculture, and uh, she's the founder of the organization. Um, basically, Oh, we may have lost Hage there. Hage, you still with us? So she'll speak more onto that. But person to be a young leader, uh, she went through and she overcame them. So you have an opportunity to basically talk to yourself through her and get to engage and see uh, uh, how best you can help yourself by engaging her to see how um, you can potentially grow yourself and projects in Namibia. So with no further ado, Ms. Helvi uh, Shindoman, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hage, thank you so much um, for such a kind introduction. I appreciate it um, um, so, so much. Um, so. I really hope we're all doing fine. Uh, I know I'm new on the team, um, but I, I also hope um, New Year has started off on a great note um, for all of us. Um, I think it is, it is um, I would first of all like to express my gratitude um, for the opportunity to you know, share my experiences, um, uh, my challenges, the opportunities, and of course what I do um, in the environment or rather agricultural sector here in Namibia. So I really, really, really appreciate it. And I think it is such an honor to, you know, address such a distinguished um, audience. I um, The room is full. It would have been nice to have a little bit of introduction from anyone, everyone so that I know who I'm engaging myself with. But if we don't have time, that is also okay. We could also do it um, from, from the chat, maybe you say, your name, um, what you do, or something like this. That would be great to, to really just know um, who is it that I'm talking to and who am I engaging myself with. Um, so, but anyways, it's it's really, really good to, to meet all of you. Um, do I get an answer whether we get a little bit of introduction or we do it via the chat? Um, I don't um, know if I yeah, I believe we can do it through the yeah. chat. They can just submit their names and uh, the, you can submit your name. You can submit basically uh, what you're studying and what your uh, inspirations are in agriculture and or environment. Yes, that, that would be great. And, and, and so that I could also align um, my, my, my talk um, or whatever I'm sharing to, to, to the energy um, that is in the room, right? So um, as Hage said, um, I'm Helvi Shindume. So um, I'm an agricultural student, not student, sorry, I've completed my, my studies. So I did my bachelor's degree in agricultural sciences um, at the Namibia University of Science and Technology. Um, and then I also did my honors degree in um, agro-business. Um, and I'm 
currently doing my master's in um, academic leadership and management that is at the University of, of Zambia. Um, so also, as, as, as he mentioned, um, I'm the founder of an organization called Women in Agriculture in Namibia. Um, so the organization was really established to you know, strengthen the role or recognition of women in the agricultural space. Um, we do a lot of capacity development, um, access to finance, issues on climate change, where we're just really empowering and creating campaign or awareness on, on, on different agricultural sustainable activities, focusing more mainly on rural women and youth farmers, right? Um, I'm also very much, um, uh, 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 connected or, or I, I also engage myself closely with um, climate change um, issues. So I'm currently the, the national coordinator for uh, Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance. Um, it's an international organization. Um, we have about 43 chapters uh, or, 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 or they, they have uh, platforms in 43, 43 countries. Um, so the, 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 the organization is more on climate justice, um, 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 climate change campaigns, and, and, and really addressing the climate change issues in, in the African continent. Uh, I'm also the Southern Regional Coordinator for Pandap Youth Network. So I, I coordinate the, the Southern um, African part. These are countries like Zambia, Zimbabwe, um, Botswana. Um, this is an, an, uh, an organization that focuses on agricultural development. Um, as well as um, youth in climate change or, or climate change advocates. Okay, so this is a, a very brief um, background um, to who you're speaking to. And so um, most of the environmental issues that I'm going to speak about um, will really be aligned to, to the environmental challenges from the, an agricultural perspective. Um, so really share with you some of the first of all number one challenges um, that um, agriculture is experiencing and then I'll speak a little bit more on the the opportunities or, or rather the solutions um, that are in the agricultural space or how to mitigate um, those challenges because I see on one of the objectives is that the participants um, sort of get ideas on um, what sort of community projects they can come up with. So I think it will really be interesting for, for those that have um, or wanna create projects with regards to, um, it, or in, in the agricultural sector rather. And then I'll also uh, really just touch base and, and, and generally on, on my work that I do um, as a young farmer and obviously as an as a, as a, as a environmental advocate um, in Namibia. Okay, uh, can I get a thumbs up? Is that okay? Should I start with whatever it is? Okay, good, thank you. Um, so I, I, I know the, the, we have a, a diverse, we have really different people from different countries. So if I can just give um, maybe a quick snap of, of, of what Namibia is, where it is, um, um, and, and how it aligns to what that I'm actually going to talk about. So Namibia is in um as an as a thousand as a country in southern Africa, right? And um it is really known for its unique um and diverse landscapes, um, including the savannas, um, the desert, um, and the coastal regions. Um, and this is a, a really um semi-arid, um, semi-arid country, um, but even though, or rather, however, um, the country faces various um, environmental issues, um, particularly within the agricultural sector, right, um, which threatens um, its ecosystems, um, the wildlife, um, and of course, uh, um, the rural communities, um, like the, like I mentioned before. So, really, one of maybe to just start off already is one of the the key environmental issues in Namibia is. Um, First of all, soil degradation, um, which is really caused by overgrazing, um, deforestation, and 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 you know, um, all other um, uh, uh, human human activities. Um, so the soil degradation really causes um, soil erosion and decline in soil fertility, which um, really makes it, of course, for for farmers um, to grow their crops. I'll give an example of. Um, of 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 um, what what we 
did um, with my bachelor's in, in, in agriculture, as if, if, if you look at the, the um, Kunene, Kunene region, for example, um, in Namibia, is really, these are one of the regions that, um, that, has, um, that has a lot of um, rangeland um, um, challenges that have been caused by by um by 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 rainwater and it's it's really one of the areas that with where the what the weather so really um um it, it's so difficult for it to you know hold hold water so you have a lot of sealed um and bare soil surfaces that are just um spreading and 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 joining up so in we we did we did a research where we visited a, um, a lot of different farmers in in in, Kun, in Kunene region and what's happening with with their farms is during the high rainfall right um the water would 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 sort of just flow in 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 um one channel and in 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 years um, or after years, it, those channels will then grow into what you call donkers or, or rather gullies. I think gulling is 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 the is the scientific word. So donkers and gullies are, are really just huge, huge water type channels. Um, and, and and so as 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 the rain falls um over the years, it pats down on the side um um of 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 this of this of this rainwater of, of this rainwater um ch uh, channels so it's it's really one of the the environmental um issue that is uh, affecting a lot of farmers and as a solution um or to what the, the research that we did was um so we we used we started um filling up the dongas or rather the the this um um uh, 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 inventor tree tree bushes. So using uh, cutting down tree bushes for like example the acacia merifera, we cut down the branches and then we fill them up in 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 those dongas or rather in the gullies to reduce the the spread or the, or the high flow um, of the water. So it's it's a very it's a very technical process. Um, and and the challenges we had was that at the time at, at some of the gullies that were filled up right. Um, that was those was the most um, impacted, uh, infected, um, or rather affected areas. Or that's where the high rainwater intensity falls. And so when the rain, the next rainy season came, it just flushed down everything. So the next concept we then used was instead of just you know lining up the the, the tree branches and leaving them, we put we fix them on on fences and then we will put up poles. And that way it 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 has a a, a, a stronger a stronger grip um, to it. I wish I could show you a picture if there are those that don't know how a gully looks like. So it's really just very, very big holes um, that have been caused um, by, by this um, soil, 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 so basically soil, um, soil erosion. So, you know, if, if, if there's any of us, of, of, of you here that would want to do any rangeland degradation methods or community projects with regard to this um, environmental issue, um, you could use the concept and, and, and I'm more than willing, you know, because it's a whole topic on its own, whole research um, process on its own that you need to do. And I'm more than willing, you know, to sort of share or even mentor um, some of you on how to create such a project, on how to, you know, um, um, come up, come up with, with with this kind of project, and then um, of, of obviously, of course, um, in addition um, to that, we have the widespread use of chemicals um, such as pesticides um, and fertilizers that you know contaminates the soil, which poses really um, high risks to human health and and then of course um the environment so that is um the one major um environmental issue that namibia is facing and especially the namibian farmers um, um and also that's one of the sort of solution um that i personally engage myself with um to solve that um and then you, you can stop me if I'm speaking too fast or if we have any questions before I move on to 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 the next um, major issue, please um, feel free to raise your hand or something like this. OK, and um, so 
another major issue um, that I, I, I could we could speak about is um, the over exploitation of water resources. Um, so as, as I mentioned before or earlier, is that Namibia is a semi-arid country, um, and the majority of its water resource um, resources are used for agricultural purposes. You know, however, um, there is a really huge um, or increasing demand for water um, that's combined with a lack of proper management. Um, I give an example um, of what is currently happening now. Um, myself, I'm the, from the northern part of the country. And um, as Hagi said, I, I just moved to, to, to the Commerce region, to the Windy City, also because of the flood and also because I, I had to fly, but because I had to um, do quite finalize a few things in Namibia, I had to, to put that down. So what's happening in the northern part of, of, of the country is we're experiencing flood. And in as much as um, someone would say this is an a climate change or a climate issue, you would also say the improper management uh, or the lack of proper management um, um, for water restoration or water harvesting um, um, techniques because um, it, so it would drain like for two hours and what happens with that water it, 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 it all of it just washes off it, it, it really just it, it really just runs off um, no harvesting um, methods or techniques um, were put in place and this is a very, very, very big challenge um, for the Namibian farmers. I speak for myself because um, I'm, I'm also a crop farmer um, in, in, in my personal capacity. I, I, I have a farm on a one, I farm on a one hectare plot up in the north. And during the winter season, I planted um, cabbage, right? So out of the whole one hectare, I, this year it was the first year when I decided to divest to just one crop, which is cabbage. And during the winter season, nothing. I haven't harvested anything um, because it it, it 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 got destroyed by by aphids, right? So all the capital that I've I've invested in um, just went literally just just washed up like that. And then so we said, okay, winter was dead. So I, I, I started now planning um, for my next planting season, which which was supposed to be the raining season. Um, and I started um, doing my cultivation and I removed all the cabbage waste hedge. And then, you know, I, I, I planted. So now I plant, I was planting three crops, which is um, tomatoes, um, onions, and, and sweet potatoes. So I planted like that two, two to three months before the whole rainwater issue. And, you know, as a farmer um, um, and, 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 and being in, in a dry country, um, if there is no rain, we, we as far as as we, we, you really just depend on, on the municipality water or rather the tap water. So my idea was that when the rainy season comes, um, at least I'm, I'm, I'm not, um, there's no challenge of, of, of water. Rather, So the three months that I've planted, my, 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 my seedlings have germinated, right? And the roof flood came. So as we speak now, my plot is under water that is um, up to my knee knee length or something like this. I don't know how to say it. But this and, and, and you see these are really on ground um challenges that, that farmers are are facing. Um and these are environmental issues um um um, um such as the 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 now um the climate change and because of rainfall um because of this environmental issue I am now for the next three four months until if, if this goes on for the whole winter season, you know, I have no um, income generation and obviously um, um, no food or some vegetables for myself. So, so you know, these, these, um, these are really um, some of, the, some of the, 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 the other challenges to, so sorry to hear about your crops. <laughs> that's all right, uh, but I think that's, that's the thing about us farmers, you, we, we are aware of the risks and um, you just become brave <laughs> out of that basically. Um, so that was, that is really one of the, the environmental challenges that I, 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 I also felt um, the need to, to bring out the exploitation of water resources in Namibia. Um, and then moving on um, to, to the next um, environmental issue or 
environmental challenge that I think um, is 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 also challenging um, uh, the Namibian farmers is uh, deforestation. Um, so you know, deforestation is an, is really another key environmental issue, and this is usually or often caused by um, the clearing of land for agriculture and the harvesting um, of um, firewood for fuel um, and, and, and you know for cooking, especially um, in the in, in the rural areas of, of, of the country. Um, so you know, um, deforestation has uh, has really increased. Um, the soil erosion and biodiversity, and it has also increased um, desertification. And you know, this is um, really uh, uh, particularly concerning um, as as forests play an important role um, in regulating the country's climate um, and conserving um, water to resources, and also providing for. Uh, providing habitats um, for the wildlife. So another example of what um, a research or a project that I've done um, in the in the northern part of the country, with regards to deforestation, is um, as so what we did was we visited a, a rural area or rural community, and we did um, a questionnaire um, 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 with with the with the rural people or the communities that have lived there in the olden days. So these are elder people and we, we, we asked them questions with regards to how did the rangeland look like um, 30 to 40 years um, when they were young, when they lived here. And then we compared that to the current situation of, of the rangeland. And, 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 and get, you guess, guessed it is that a lot of deforestation has, has, has been taking place because over a hundred years, um, the families of, 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 these, of those people, they've been you know, cutting down trees for, for firewood, they've been cutting down trees for more agricultural space, they've been cutting down trees um, for more households. And, and, and so there's now a, a, a difference in, 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 the, in the rangeland, um, trees and, and, and the grass species that are in those areas. So what we then did was um, to sort of rejuvenate um, 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 that community area and sort of re bring back um, the forest, if you should call it, is um, we, we, we did, we looked at the indigenous trees that were present in the area uh, before um, that went ex extinct now, and as well as the, the different grass species um, that they, animals would graze on or the palatable grass species that, uh, for the animals that don't exist there now or that rather went extinct. And then we planted um, those trees and then these grass species back into um, into into in, in, into that that area. So this was about three years ago when I did that. Um, I did visit this community in uh, uh, 2022, around 20, end of 2021, I think. Uh, uh, and um, with the previous uh, rain season after that, we really saw, especially with the different grass species that came up, um, the, the ones that we, we replanted um, are now present. And, and, and you know, we, we, you would see also some of the indigenous trees that we planted are also really uh, flourishing well. So I think that is, uh, would also be a very good um, Good initiative to to come up with um, 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 for as a mitigation method um, for demonstration for different um, communities um, or something like like this, right? Okay, um, I know I I've got in about fifteen minutes or so, uh, but if if I'm not going out of time, I can quickly share. Um, I can continue and share maybe like one more. Um, issues um that i've really been 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 um focusing on so you know this this one um area is 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 one of the the environmental issues that i i have been myself as a as a young person and as a as a climate change advocate um been focusing on um which is recently come came from or i just recently came from the uh, conference of parties um, cop 27 and um, it really put me in in, in, an, in an area or to think about where does Namibia um, stand or where is Namibia um, 
in? Do we have the capacity? Uh, you know, are we getting there? Do we have the knowledge um, to really face this um, 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 climate change um, 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 issue that is coming up? Because I mean, people are worried about the increase of food prices, right? And I always keep telling them that we have we have something bigger that is coming for us, and 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 if we're not going to start now with the mitigation at the adaptation um, methodologies for this, we might find ourselves in a serious problem. And, and the issue of whether fuel is $2 extra or $2 lower um, might not even exist because of this whole um, environmental climate change um, crisis, if, 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 I may, if I may call it. So um, really Namibia um, or the country has is experiencing increasing temperatures and um, changes in the rainfall patterns. I just gave an example of level of the flood that is happening um, in the northern part of the country. And I think about uh, two months ago, two or three, and I think my Namibian um, colleagues would can also um, correct me, two months ago we had um, flash floods in, 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 in Windhoek. And it was so funny from my side because I left Windhoek um, two hours before that, and 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 I took a two-hour flight to the next town. So when I arrived in the next town, I put on my mobile data, and I'm seeing all those video snapshots of like Windhoek is flooded. And I was like, I'm, I was, I just came from that two hours ago. Um, are the people editing videos or, or what is happening now? But the same area I stood in is really underwater, and and sadly it killed. Um, it killed about 11 um, street kids, if I'm not mistaken. And this was just a flash, flash flood that rain, consistent rain for two hours. And it has done so much damage already. So, you know, this is really one of the, 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 the climate crises um, um, that Namibia is, is facing. And particularly, I think we, we might be ready, but as Namibian youth, we really need um, to do more, we really need uh, a lot of young, um, young, brilliant minds uh, as the ones that are on, on, on the panel um, to really come up with these initiatives. Um, uh, uh, um, um, yeah, to, to mitigate some of this. I think I see at hand, do I take yes, it or do I... I it, yeah, basically, so we have about five minutes left. Oh. So we can wrap up and let's also... Um, uh, also, maybe get into the the type of opportunities there are, and how um, the young people can go about it to also represent Namibia in mm -hmm. whatever aspect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Hagi. Thank you for for the reminder. I, I know I can I can speak for the whole day. <laughs> Um, so, okay, you know, jumping to 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 the opportunities, um, I think in especially in the the climate change um, um, aspect, is we need a lot of um, community um, engagement um, initiatives and projects. Um, what we are doing now with my organization, the Women in Agriculture Organization, is due because of the floods and the damage it, it did, we are now um, collaborating with the um, different local local authorities to come up with early sign um, warnings for, for, for warning systems for, for, for the small scale farmers. Um, so uh, coming up with tools um, that would warn the farmers that these uh, uh, flash floods that are coming up so that all oh, there are floods, uh, we're, we're gonna experience floods in the next two months so that a farmer but then knows not to not to invest so much money um, in, 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 into their crop field for that time because then there's this um, I remember that. and 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 I know um, another opportunities that one can can take is literally capacity um, development for for communities and especially um, rural communities. Um, you know this. These rural farmers, these are people that are used to their olden way of, of, of farming. And they do know that the climate is somewhat changing, but they don't know about any climate adaptation methods. They don't know any mitigation methods. They don't know what to do with the, with the really new and forever um, 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 changing 
changing climate. So a lot of capacity development, a lot of campaigns, a lot of uh, uh, awareness creation for those rural communities um, could 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 be could be a, a very a very good um, area to tap in. And then also from the part of you could uh, someone who has a, a really technical logical mindset. Um, I think we need we need that one of the uh, uh, gaps that um, a lot of young people should really tap in. How to use technology to mitigate some of those um, environmental, um, you know, environmental issues um, would be really one of one of the opportunities as well. Um, and 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 then um, obviously uh, the five minutes. So, in, in conclusion, whether I would I would. Um, I would I would say um, there the are obviously several key environmental issues um, in Namibia from an agricultural perspective. Perspective, and as I mentioned before, this includes um, soil degradation, um, of exploitation of water resources, um, devastation, and the impacts of of, of 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 obviously climate change. So really, to to address some of these issues, um, it is important to to promote. Um, um, sustainable agricultural practices, such as integrated soil and water management, conservation, um, agriculture, and 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 of course agroforestry. So, um, additionally, they, they, there is uh, a need um, for increased investment, and um, especially in the research um, and development in the education and infrastructure. Um, to to support the country's agricultural sectors and and you know to help farmers to 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 adapt to to the forever changing um environment so i i don't want to go over my time but uh, I, I think i i'm very much open and and willing to to support anyone who wants to to sort of come up with any in initiatives in the agricultural space um, um, to collaborate with the organization, of course. And, and if, if there's any anything that I've spoken of, anyone more clarity, I'm more than willing to do that over a chat or a call or a cup of coffee, <laughs> you know, whichever works. Um, so, but I think, um, like I said before, thank you very, very much um, to the team that has um, invited me and, and really it was a pleasure to, to to really engage and share my thoughts with all of you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank thank you. That was that was fantastic. Uh, really, really appreciate um, the the depth and the the, the range uh, of what you shared about your work in the, the, the broader setting of agriculture and climate change and land use in Namibia. Um, just wanted to, to make sure um, it's okay. Do you have time for some questions from, from the, the group here? Yes, please. All right, fantastic. Well, well maybe I'll, I'll kick us off um, if, if that's all right. I'll, I'll ask my my two questions and they're, they're actually a little bit different, um, but hopefully they're 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 uh, helpful for for all the folks. So so one is on on leadership. The first question is I'm, I was really struck by and impressed with your your desire to just start changing and and start taking leadership. So I'm uh, I would love if you could share with the the group of sort of how you uh, as a youth leader decided to become a leader and decided to take action when sometimes that can be uncomfortable or or sometimes um it can be unclear where to start so if you could share sort of if it came from within or maybe from your community or a combination of the the both so that's that's question number one and then question number two is um since we're we're learning a lot about environmental issues broadly but also more specifically on wildlife conservation issues um, and i know that there's a lot of conflict on human wildlife conflict especially around uh, agriculture spaces where where maybe animals, maybe elephants, for example, are infringing on territory that that humans want or feel like they they need for their crops. So, yeah, maybe you could just speak about challenges and potential solutions to human wildlife conflicts, especially as it relates to agriculture and livelihoods, which are so important for for people in so many different areas in Namibia. And yeah, I'll I'll share those two questions. Um, but beyond that, I just want to say thanks for for your responses earlier. It was really fantastic. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Patrick. Um, so the first question on, um, you know, leadership, how I came up with the initiative, you know, to just um, 
take on something um, myself is I'll make this a little a bit personal so that I don't speak like um, the Oprah Winfrey was the light to you and, and you know, share with you all those uh, <laughs> um, unrealistic methods. So one thing is you, you need to know that um, taking up leadership roles and, and for example, um, funding and setting up organizations is as not as easy as it looks like. So the one tip I would give is that you need to find a sector or industry um, that you have passion with. Um, um, because the first thing is when you start an organization, in most cases, like uh, for example, in, in, in a non-governmental organization, you don't have funds to fund this organization from the start. So you would really need to have the part, the passion, the patience, um, and, and the willingness to use your funds for the first um, um, initiatives that you come up with. Um, so if, if you want to start, let's say, a, a, a campaign um, for your first organization to just really create that um, 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 that, that, that presence um, in, in your country or whatsoever, you need to be, you need to be prepared to use your own resources. This can be your financial resources. Um, this can be your, your 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 in your own capacity because you won't have the finances to first of all um, uh, 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 pay someone or pay experts, you know, to come to come and and look at some of these issues. So you need to find a sector or something that you really have passion and that you know a very good deal about it. And then the second thing is, if you don't know much on it, you need to read as much thrift because um for me uh agriculture is what i studied um it's 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 my career and it was really easy for me to know to or to do research on on what are the issues affecting the namibian women farmers and what will then my organization um um bring out bring out for that um and then the the the, the other tip i'll share is um when it comes to leadership you 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 really have to look at what time especially for for startups start, startup organizations you need to look at what team members are you bringing on board um and so a trick that i do is i bring people on board first of all people that are smart than me, uh, people that are, you know, um, I don't really say bigger than me, but because they have the experience, they have the knowledge, they know, they have the know-how, most of them are a bit older than me, because then I need to learn from them. So look for people, um, look for people that, that will bring something tangible on 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 your on your team and i know most of the time you 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 want to engage your fellow um your fellow youth for example students um you want to bring them on board as well but you can bring them in as volunteers but when you speak on on on, on the board you need people that can advise you as well people that you can learn from as well because you don't want to stand in, in in a position where there is this new challenge um that you need to do within the organization or within your the, the company and all of you stand and look at each other because no one knows um, and none of you have been in such a situation. But you have, when you have like-minded people, when you have people that are experienced, uh, people that can sort of mentor you, you are in a better position um, of um, 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 carrying out um, carrying out the activities uh, or, or these challenges that you are facing um, within your organization. But um, nonetheless, I think leadership is is um, it's a really it's a really good um, journey. And as a young person, I would I would always really um, advise you that strive for 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 being a leader to be or to be rather a leader in in whatever aspects uh, um, that 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 you're engaging yourself um, in, and don't be scared to to start that initiative. Um, don't you know? Don't don't. Go, I mean, just go for it. Just go for it because that's where you learn. Um, I have also started a very young. I think I started at the age of twenty when I started my organization. I was still in in, in university, and I would sit. I would stand in front of board members or, or the top management, and I felt intimidated because I didn't have um, um, 
a lot of knowledge or I, 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 I just felt intimidated because I'm like, what am I doing in front of all those people? And people expect certain things from you, but because you are upcoming, you are really young, um, you need to learn. So um, be patient and, and really just take it, take it on. If you want to be the president, go for it. Um, if, 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 if you want to join a new company and they are offering you an internship role, but you know you want to be the boss, so go for it, pitch it, <laughs> don't be scared. <laughs> so really that is um, on, on leadership. And I see a lot of um, uh, other questions are hands there, but quickly uh, put you to answer your question on, on the wildlife um, conflict. Um, I, I can give an example of, um, of, 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 um, of, of the, the, one of the conflicts that, that we are facing in Namibia, especially for the farmers, um, as, um, is, 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 uh, um, Poaching, at poaching. If I could, if I could use that. Um, um, so this is really um, one one of the child, one of, one of the conflicts that are emerging with Namibian farmers. And as a solution to this, you would need. Um, I always advise farmers to have um, improved um, livestock management. So really, one of the uh, the solution to to wildlife conflict is to improve livestock management practices. Um, you know, this can include um, enclosing livestock to secure pens, for example. Um, or, or providing livestock with proper, you know, food and water so that they are really just in, in, in one area and not uh, grazing or wandering around um, the entire farm. And then of course, um, using guard animals to protect heads, um, to, to, to protect yeah, your, 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 cannibal, your cattle um, heads. Another solution is you could look at um, the, the wildlife um, um, corridors. So another solution to this is to create uh, wildlife corridors, um, you know, um, that allow animals to move freely between habitats without coming into conflict um, with humans. Um, and because I know there are a lot of, uh, 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 um, conflicts, especially with farmers, when they, uh, a lion will be too exaggerated. But if for the first thing, when they see a cheetah or, 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 or what is what is the animal? Sorry, my brain is now leaving me now. <laughs> but when, when, for example, a lion, the first thing a farmer thinks about is their animals, right? Is, is their cattle, is their goats. And really the one thing that they do is kill. They don't hesitate. Right, so this is one of the really uh, conflicts between human and, and and the wildlife. And a solution that I could give is create as farmers you create um, um wildlife corridors so that there's no so much interactions between um the wildlife and 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 you know and 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 the the women. And then maybe just um quickly quickly another alternative um livelihood is providing um alternative livelihood to communities who are dependent on natural resources, um, which can, can really help reduce um, the human wildlife conflicts. So I think already this is one initiative that any of the participants here um, 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 could come up with to engage with uh, the community members um, that depend on natural resources. For example, the, the sun people in Namibia, you could come up with a, uh, an initiative or a project that First of all, you start off with capacity development to just, you know, uh, make people or create new, new awareness, provide them with new uh, uh, farming or, or, or gathering techniques so that they, you know, there's no that um, conflict between the, the those young people. So I think Patrick, I, I I hope I did justice to your two questions. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, I saw two hands raised. I can take those as well. Uh, yeah, I was um, going to say, I think Peter left the call because he, he had raised his hand before me, but he lowered it and I don't think he's on the call anymore. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'll okay. ask my question briefly. Um, it's just about how do you think your college education prepared you for being an environmental leader? Or a leader of a of a nonprofit organization like you like you run currently. Yeah, um, um, I think if if I could answer it with regards to numbers, um, out of ten, I would give it a nine because you know when when I when I joined um, the agricultural space, first of all, it was in in high school and in primary, it was just. Um, 
favorite subject, you know, I would, I would sort of get um, my really low grades in subjects like mathematics um, and physical science, like uh, maybe in EU. But when it comes to agriculture, I would score really well, so like an A. So it it it, it just started off as a as as a subject that you know I I I I loved myself and I found really easy. But as as I went on to 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 take it as a as a as um in, in in the tertiary uh, sector, which is at a university, it really put me in a position where I understood the sector, right? And and that is also where I, I saw the gaps um, with regards to, to to the challenges that the women farmers um, are facing. So you know, with my with my degree, I started. In, interacting with more women farmers and and, and 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 you know we we did a lot of farm excursions as well so you know visiting the different farmers looking at the challenges that they're having finding solutions for them you know so finding sustainable agricultural practices for them it it, it put me in a position to start the organization first of all and to 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 really understand what the industry what the sector is about because you you can't help something that you don't know you need to know about it first and and, and that's why i say um for you to take up this leadership role if you don't have the skill let's say you have the passion right you really see this um underlying challenge or problem in in your community or in your country but you don't have the skills you didn't you don't have a qualification for for, for it then do your research read books you know um you they say youtube is our number one friend and and trust me you i learned a lot of um, things from YouTube. My qualification, for example, just taught me um, about crop farming, horticulture. How do I how do I tell a farmer to water their plants? But it never really taught me how to do public speaking. So I spend a lot of hours on you know. So if 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 there's uh, uh, something that 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 you want to learn, um, really Google 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 Google. Read books. The library is there, and and it's not always the case that you need a, a, a qualification you can do a report. there are a lot of uh, websites um uh, that, that 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 provide different um short courses and especially if it is in india maybe i put them in the chat as well um that some of the short courses or, or websites that i wear short courses so really um the qualification much better position to to run and manage an organization, but that's not the only. Thing. I wonder. Um, we we're kind of coming up on our our hour block, and some folks might need to drop off. But I uh, wonder if we could give Peter the the last question, and then we can can break from there. How does that sound, Helvi? If you have another couple of minutes for one final question. Yeah. No. Sure. Go ahead, no Peter. Um, am I audible? Because I was having problems with network. Yes, um, Peter. Uh, I have two quick questions. Um, the first one is, um, firstly, I want to say I'm glad that you said something about mentoring and all that because I wanted to ask if there are, if there's opportunities to work with or collaborate or intern with you. Um, because I think there's no better teacher than experience. And learning from you would be great for us that are just starting out yourself. Because also not specializing in agriculture, so it would be good to you know get some perspective from you and all that. Um, yes, um, thank you, Peter. So most definitely, um, um, that is that is basically what I do. Is, uh, you know, assist uh, first of all uh, other like-minded um, young people and. And I am more really, I'm really more than willing to to engage with you, um, any topic or whatever that you, for me with the topic that I've I've about. But then also we have um, women in agriculture organization. Um, we last month a mentorship program, so it's called 
Tungeni Africa Mentorship Program. Um, to Tungeni is in a native language. It's it's called Let's Build Africa. So this mentorship program, what we are doing is we partner up with um, with Upside Africa. They are in a startup um, incubator organization that is based in in South Africa. And so what we are doing is we are linking Namibian young farmers that have agri business ideas to international. Um, to international mentors. So if you have, for example, um, a business idea or an agribusiness idea that you want to, to start up in Namibia, will you then sign up in, in, in the program and then we'll find a specific mentor or an expert to, to, to guide you. So it's a three, three month incubation program. Um, and then we sign you up with that mentor and then they go with you really through. So you could, I could, I could share the, uh, the link the link and maybe sort of a flyer or poster for for the mentorship program in the chat. Um, but really, I'm I'm also very much willing to collaborate, partner, or assist wherever I can. Good. So I will share the link of the mentorship program um, and 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 as well like a poster or something like this. I can do that in the chat or wherever um, you see fit. Great, thank you. Yeah, if you share it with the chat, and then um, you could also share it. Um, well, actually, I, I can pass it on to, to folks who couldn't make it today, um, and I'll make sure everybody has access to it. Uh, we can close here, and uh, let's let's give Helvi uh, our our thanks and a, a round of applause for sharing time, wisdom, energy, and inspiration. Really appreciate it. A uh, really wonder, wonderful chat. Uh, like I mentioned, I, I learned a lot and um, I'm sure our really amazing leaders from the United States and Namibia did as, as well. So thanks for being an inspiration and we uh, all wish you great luck and success with your continued work and we'll be following your, your efforts and your inspiration and we'll see you in the social impact, environmental impact space before too long. Thank you and thank you everyone.